Hi, I'm Kartha Gewert, and this is Gorgon. He does magic in his head, obviously. We don't need the fan just yet. I've lived more years on this earth with Gorgon than I've lived without him. And similar to that, I've lived more years on this earth eating instant noodles than I have without. The first thing I ever learned how to use was a stove, well actually maybe a bike, I don't know. But the first kitchen appliance I ever learned how to use was a stove so I could cook instant noodles by myself. And we're going to put the most popular, legendary, iconic instant noodles together. We're gonna mix them all together and see how it tastes. This should be very interesting because every single instant noodle has a different purpose. I'll show you why. This is Indomie. This may be the most popular instant noodle in the entire world. If you've never tried this before, you should because it's absolutely stunning. It is an umami bomb. Unlike some of these other noodles, it's very good under cooked. I make it just so I can put my fork through it with ease and then I take it off the heat. There's indulgence ramens and there's everyday ramens. This is what you eat if you really just want to relax and you want to feel safe and happy. This has two different flavor packets. They've got the dry, a lot of different stuff in there. This instant noodle is in fact so popular that they made a chip of it. Now, I don't like chips, so I'm not even gonna worry about it. But I was gonna eat those and now they're crunchy on the floor. I'm sure they're fine. There's a lot of air in there. Oh. I was one of the only Asian kids in my school when I was little and they didn't like like weird new stuff. But whenever I showed them into me, they were like, this is the best thing I've ever tried in my life. And I was like, get it at the Asian supermarket, yeah. Second up, Sapporo Ichiban Yakisoba. Just gorgeous. Is it one of the best? No, but oh, she's trying. Is it as good as Indomie? No, you'll find that nothing is. Indomie is so good that when my Nenet Ma came here from Singapore, her bag was full of it. And I was like, Nenet, we have Indomie here. And she was like, oh, do you also have fish fillet? And I was like, yes, we have, we have McDonald's here too. This one is quite nice and quite, quite, I mean, it's yakisoba, it's good. You eat it when there's nothing left. It's inexpensive. The nice thing about it is like you get a big block of it. Look at the size of this compared to the size of Indomie. So I have this here, if I don't wanna to feel too bad about myself, I need three bags of this to fill up, you know what I'm saying? So like this one makes me feel more accomplished. The first one is Indonesian, this one hails from Japan. We've got the classic Sapporo seasoning and also to give it that nice umami yakisoba flavor, seaweed. It really does a lot. It's really nice when you use half of it and then you sprinkle the other half on top. Delicious. This next one, <clears throat> There's been a bit of a debate between myself and myself whether this one should even be included because compared to the other ones, it's not good. This is Mr. Noodle. Anytime you go to any ramen section of any grocery store, you find Mr. Noodle. It's chill. This is the kind of noodle that you take, you crunch up, and you eat it as a recess snack. Or you take it, you crunch it up, you put a little water in it, and you put it in the microwave. The rest of these ramens you would never disrespect with a microwave. With this one, you can because it's just like chicken flavor. It's not It's already good. disrespecting you. Yeah, it's just, yeah, you're, you're disrespecting yourself by eating this. Not spicy at all. Not spicy at all. I have to add, the Indomie is spicy. The yakisoba is not spicy. And this is very not spicy at all. It just comes with a packet of chicken bouillon and uh, the only time I'll eat this and enjoy it is when I get a noodle cup on an airplane because it makes me feel like I'm eating instant noodles. It makes me feel soothed. But by itself, when it's compared to the other ramens, it is just not, it's not it, you know? One time during recess, a girl was like, I can't eat Mr. Noodle, it's too spicy. And I was like, if this was a more multicultural town, I would really enjoy bullying you with everybody else. But unfortunately, I have to just be like, okay. Yeah, it is quite spicy, actually. A way you can eat this that's very good, actually, is if you cook it, you add Frank's Red Hot Sauce, tomato, butter, pepper, and garlic powder. That's what makes this good. But you, if you use it as a blank canvas, it's kind of like tofu where it can like take the flavor of what you want. But by itself, it's just, it's just not good by itself. Very plain, kind of trash. Now, this next one here is why I learned to use a stove in the first place. This next one here is the everyday noodle. I've eaten more packages of this than any other kind of instant noodle. As much as I love the Indomie, the Sapporo Ichiban 
it just goes so hard. I can't explain to you what this tastes like because it says original flavor. It used to say oriental flavor, but I guess they changed that because maybe it was offensive. It's just, it's original flavor. You know, we got chicken flavor. We got yakisoba flavor. This is original flavor. I don't know what it tastes like. It's absolutely delicious. It's so good. It's so, so good. And with this one, you can cook it dry. You can cook it with soup. Any decision that you make with this, is a good decision. It has to be the red package. A lot of people make mistakes. They get the green one, they get the pink one, they get, I don't know, maybe there's an orange one. Who I've never tried it, but like this right here, money. money. It's absolute, oh my gosh, it's so good. <laughs> it's so, so, so good. Ichiban means number one in Japanese. They weren't messing around. They were like, we're gonna make an instant ramen. And yeah, you you can you can make all your little like, uh, your wet seasoning packets to make it look expensive and all that stuff. But no, this right here, so, good and honestly, I could eat it every single day. And in the fifth grade to the eighth grade, I ate it every single day. It's that good. Is it better than Indomie? They're tied. Like they, they serve different purposes. One is comfort food and one is, I just wanna be so happy today, you know? This next one is very, very interesting because I didn't wanna try it because it sounds absolutely disgusting. Have you ever heard of a spicy carbonara flavored ramen? Me neither, until this. This is so popular that it has a cult following. That's the Samyang hot chicken. Sounds disgusting, absolutely delicious. If you've ever had Korean food before, you would know that it's hot. So don't let this like, ooh, creamy, nice, ooh. There are other kinds that are like really spicy, but maybe I can handle the carbonara. You can't. If you can't handle spice, this isn't for you. If you can handle spice, welcome to flavor country because this is delicious. The first time I made it, I added mushrooms and tomato and green onion, and it was absolutely stunning. I have got this one because my friend sent me a meme where she like is up at 3 a.m. eating it, and I had been putting off trying it for so long, but I couldn't at that point anymore. I was like, screw it. I went on my bike, rode to Koreatown, and then bought this. Also very big flavor. Now, unlike the other ones, which are every day I love myself and my life ramens, this is, I would probably say about a once a week. Like this is the treat yourself ramen. Unless you want to eat something really, really rich every single day. But I, I'm not the kind of person that can eat like carbonara every day. It has two seasoned packets. One of them is just pure heat. This is wet. This I, I'm pretty sure this is just chili sauce. Like it's hot. And the other one is a cheese and milk product. This is a very dairy heavy. This is what gives it that carbonara taste. So we got the creamy end of the stick and we got the spicy end of the stick. It feels like a celebration. If you're kind of running low on money, but you want to have like a, a very rich celebration, this is it right here. And finally, we're gonna finish off with another Korean ramen that is very hot. This is the Shin Ram Yun. Uh, it's just, it's spicy, what can I say? It's so spicy. <laughs> it's not like so spicy that you'll die unless you can't handle spice. This one I chose not because it's one of my favorites, but because it's always at the top of so many different lists. Usually Indomie is actually at the top of every list, but this one's always a close second, so. I like it when you cook it with egg, green onion, and then you, when it's like super hot and you just plate it, you put like some cheese on top and let it melt to like tame the heat a little bit. I've done that in a video before, but she popular. The black version of this is also very, very good and not as spicy, but this is like the OG, this is the original. This is where the money's at. This one right here has a super hot, red hot chili seasoning, and it has a packet just for vegetables, which is like kind of cute. This looks like an expensive ramen. It looks like, I don't know, there's something authentic about having more than one seasoning packet. There's something impressive about it, particularly if one is dry and one is wet. I just, I love that. Now, because a lot of these, like this one is best to eat in, I mean, this one is best eaten with soup, but it can be eaten dry. This one is better to have like, very little soup, eight tablespoons of water is what's recommended. This one can be eaten dry or wet. I like it wet. This is trash, so this one doesn't have an opinion in this argument. And then these other two are dry. So instead of making it with a ton of soup, since a lot of the important ones do better without soup or can handle not having soup, I'm going to minimize the amount of water, cook them all at the same time, and see what all of these every day and once a week ramens taste like together. I've got a big old pot here. Big ol' pot. I'm gonna fill this up. Now, I would like you to take a walk with me over to the sink. On the way to the sink here, it's very important to notice that I have a ramen cupboard 
It's very important to me. This is where I go when, you know, you just don't want to think about it too much, which is often. Am I gonna die of sodium overdose? Probably, but at least I lived. I lived a good life. I try to add extra nutrition to my ramen when I can, but like, I get bored. When putting water in the pan, if you've made ramen as many times as I have, you just eyeball it. And if you're ditching all of the water, you might as well just put enough that you know that there's enough. <laughs> And then you strain it after, so it doesn't really matter too much. If you're cooking an instant noodle that has like dry and wet seasonings, I find it's better because the timings are important if you like a certain texture of noodle. It's better to like mix them in a bowl together so that you can go noodles, strain, throw in here, stir, eat immediately. So I'm gonna mix all of the seasonings in the bowl that they're going to live in. This is a very big bowl. Look at that beautiful, like probably just straight MSG and uh, some lovely dried onions. I'm gonna do the dry seasonings first. That's our vegetables for the day. Shin ram yuns, the hotness, the heat, Sapporo. Oh, I'm using all of it. I need that flavor. Although most of the time when I cook it dry, I actually do only use half of the seasoning because the seasoning is supposed to be dispersed throughout a lot of water and there's not gonna be a lot of water here. Okay, so this is the yakisoba. This one's very salty, so again, I'm gonna use half because the Sapporo is gonna be very salty as well. The Mr. Noodle, the, oh, what am I doing? Man, this is like, we should do the math of how salty this is. Because like a lot of these ramens have like the amount of salt you should eat in like a week. <laughs> if you have heart problems, I feel bad for you, son. Cause I eat ramen every day. Okay, so this Korean heat, very hot, so I'm just gonna use a bit so I can actually eat it. Okay, that was most of it, but whatever. And of course, the Indomie. The Indomie wet seasoning. Every time you use this, it completely ruins your fork. There's sweet soy sauce on my scissors, not my fork. I used to get my mom to omit this uh, chili packeting, but then I grew a pair, started to enjoy spicy food. Spicy food is actually quite good for you. So if you can handle it, good. And if you can't handle it, you should try. There's a lot more dry than wet, so it's like not mixing like I prefer it to. Oftentimes I'll add Frank's Red Hot so it mixes better, but I don't want to like mess with how it's supposed to be. You excited, Gorgon? These seasonings together smell very good. The Indomie is like kind of overpowering the rest of it. It smells like Indomie with friends. Okay, starting with the noodles that can withstand being overcooked the uh, hot chicken flavor ramen. And if you look at the kind of noodle this is, it's a very interesting noodle. It's like stretchy. It looks kind of like linguine. Throwing that in. The shin is more like your standard instant ramen noodle. However, it does have like the same like stretch that the hot carbo has. So we're gonna do this one second. The yakisoba, she's a thick girl. Sapporo I feel uses all like the same noodles, but different seasonings. Oh, my favorite little girl. The part what you bad. Mm. Mr. Noodle. It's a much thinner noodle. It's just thin, it's just there. Nobody really notices it. But like, it really does its part for society. And last but not least, the Indomie. Ugh, even the noodle smells good. It actually looks like the Mr. Noodle noodle. It's a lot more yellow than the other ones. It looks like an egg noodle, like the kind you'd use for fried noodles. I guess that's why it's called Indomie. Fried noodles or me goring. Oh, this is really getting there. Look at all the different kinds of noodles mixing together like a bunch of friends. This like flat hot carbo noodle is really like, this is my house, nobody else's. I didn't cook this for very long. <laughs> a lot of people like their noodles to be like kind of overcooked and like I see the beauty in that. But for me personally, I don't know. I just kind of, I kind of like when the noodles don't just go in my stomach and instantly evaporate. Okay, I'm leaving some of the water. I'm gonna put it in here. And also I'm gonna move the noodles right away before they completely drain. Cause we do need some water. Whoa. Now we're mixing. It makes it a lot easier to use two forks. I always use two forks when I'm mixing instant noodles like this. What is this gonna taste like? There's so many different flavors. You have to make sure it's mixed really well because nothing's worse than getting like a concentrated bite of the uh, seasoning. Oh, it's a bit much. What if this is just like amazing? Then I guess I'll do it all the time. Every Thanksgiving, me and my brother cook for everybody. And like Indomie is so good that we were considering like making like 10 bags of it as one of the sides. But then 
nothing would like compare to it that we could cook. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't ask their favorite part because yeah, they'd know. be like, oh, that that fried noodle. How did you guys make that? And we'd be like. Also, the interesting thing about uh, Indumi, <laughs> Indumi, is that it's been like for the making of this video, this is the hardest noodle to find. I think what happened is when um, quarantine first started, like the Sapporo sold out, the Mr. Noodles sold out, and then a bunch of people went to the store and were like, what is this Indumi? And now it's consistently sold out. It's consistently gone. Okay, this is cooked. And this is why I kind of like to strain it when it's undercooked because like there's still water in here and it keeps cooking the longer it sits in it. So like it was al dente before and now it's like perfectly cooked. Whereas if I cooked it until it was softer and I did this, it would be mushy and gross. Nobody likes that. That's a big bowl. Hot. It tastes like something you get at a restaurant. Like it tastes like you something you pay a lot of money for. Like this tastes very deliberate. Oh my goodness. If I got this at a restaurant, I would be like, Tara, we have to go back like every day. What? Yeah, it tastes like everything good together. Oh, I need a drink to make this more enjoyable. My only regret is I should have went 50% for all the different flavor packets because if it had half of the flavor, it would be so much better. You know what I mean? If it had half, that half would go further because it would be less salty, less like overwhelmingly salty. What does that taste like to you? I don't know, like original flavor of some <laughs> new noodle. Mm -hmm. If I made my Sapporo original flavor, this is what it would taste like. I find it like not too spicy. Yeah, I know it's perfect. It's not too spicy. It's so hard to explain. Like it tastes like umami. It tastes like Korea, Japan, and Indonesia had a baby and it's the most beautiful little girl you've ever seen. Just wanna eat her up. Mm -hmm. What got lost in this is like the, um, the creaminess of the carbonara. It's lost, it's gone. Might as well not even be there. Would you melt the cheese on it? No, I would add tomatoes, mushrooms, green onion, and a lot of egg. So here's my issue. I hate when cooking shows like, don't tell you what it tastes like. That's why I've been sitting here for so long. Because I'm trying to tell you what this tastes like, but I can't. It's making my nose run. Because <laughs> it's spicy, but like, what does that taste like? It tastes like umami. It's kind of like, I don't know, I think all dressed chips are Canadian. I think ketchup chips are Canadian and America has all dressed. Okay, well all dressed chips kind of like have like a weird flavor that isn't really like a like a describable flavor, you know? It's yeah. just kind of like, like if it was like chicken or something, you'd just say like it tastes like chicken, but like. It tastes like a giant bowl of migoring that you would get at a Malaysian restaurant. Like it tastes good. Spices are hard because it's like aroma and fragrance that is like, if I were to say like, what does cardamom taste like? You'd be like, what? You're supposed to say like, it tastes like cloves. It tastes like cardamom. It tastes like coriander seed. They're the points of reference. So like this is, it tastes like a bunch of points of reference and it's hard to explain what it tastes like. Yeah, it's like a fully formed dish. Mm -hmm. mm. It's evolution, baby. I've eaten the equivalent of one bag of indumi so far. Like that's how fast indumi goes. And this is still here. This is what you do if you want a bag of indumi and uh, you want it to last longer. There's something to say about indumi's flavor complexity because of all of them, this tastes the closest to indumi. Yeah, I can only say if you know Malaysian food, it tastes like mi goreng. And mi goreng is a beloved dish in Malaysia. So that's what it's like. It's good. Would I do it again? Yeah. Yeah, I'd do this again. I'd eat this again. I'll eat this whole thing. I, I like. I'm scared because I want to be able to eat dinner without feeling guilty tonight, but this is probably enough sodium to kill a small child. It's so good though. It's enough sodium to kill a Gorgon. Mm-hmm. Gorgon couldn't try this because it's too spicy. Hey, Gorgon. It's way too spicy. He would have diarrhea everywhere. I can't even give him one noodle. It's too spicy. This is the Korean heat in like the Southeast Asian flavor profile. It's stunning. It's gorgeous. I love it. Well, that's all I got to say about that. Oh, I'm gonna have a stomach ache later because of the spice. <laughs> Ooh, it tastes so good though. That's the problem with spice is like it, it feels good going in, doesn't feel good after that. Well, that was the most popular ramens in the world mixed together. It was a good time. And let me know in the comments. Let me know angrily. 
which ramen that you like that I missed. If I watched a video like this and somebody didn't put like Sapporo or Indomie in it, I'd be like, this idiot doesn't know what they're talking about. So like, let me know in the comments if there's something that I don't know what I'm talking about. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one. Bye. This has gone right. Are you so feminine?